Welcome to this video on object-oriented programming and classes. What we're going to look at is, to begin with, a little ancient Greek philosophy. We'll be looking at this guy called Plato, who lived thousands of years ago, but came up with a very interesting connection. Whether the architects of object-oriented programming are aware, we don't know, but a very interesting connection that links our current idea of classes to how ancient philosophy and his thoughts, Plato's thoughts, on how the universe worked. We're also going to look at how to write your own class in Python. We're going to start with a shape class, which is actually going to draw visually for you a shape and explore some of the foundations of object-oriented programming. One of the first questions you might want to ask yourself is what makes you you? Are you what you look like when you meet someone? What do you want them to, what, what is it? that actually makes you you, which uniquely identifies you as you. Is it what you do? Is it what you eat? What makes us uniquely us? Now when we think of definitions of objects and things, we realise that we live in a universe of things. We live in a universe of objects. We have living things and non-living things. But every single object or every single thing in the universe has attributes, which is what they are. Things like a lion would have a name, a size, a colour, and what they do. These are called methods in programming, such as a lion can jump, it can eat. Plato said something incredibly interesting. He had what was called the theory of forms, and during his metaphysical discussions, he referred to forms as abstract representations, or blueprints, that's the word that we use in programming, or templates or patterns for real-world objects. In other words, he said that we recognize a horse because there exists in the heavenly planes something such as a blueprint or a pattern for what a horse is. And every horse or, or chair or whatever it might be that we see in this world is actually like a shadow of the actual or the reality that exists in a different plane. Now, object-oriented programming is interestingly extremely similar. If you think of a class, you think of a class as a classification or a blueprint of an object. It's not the object itself, it's the definition of an object. An object is like a particular instance of a class. So if you had a human class, you'd have instances of the human class such as Jonathan or Ruthie or John or George. These are objects. Why should we use classes? This is all going to become more obvious to you when we actually start coding in a minute. But to give you by way of introduction, classes are really useful for grouping things together. So you don't have attributes flying around. You don't have methods, lots of functions all over the place. You have them all in one place. So Super Mario, the object if we created him, he'd have attributes like location, strength, and he'd have methods like run jumps and they'd all be packaged together in this one beautiful thing, entity, called a class. You can pause and make note of some of these obvious benefits of having classes. Now you could think of creating a very complex game without classes, but it would become hideously, hideously disorganized and complex and very difficult to navigate. So this is an example of a, a rocket class. Classes do make programming easier. So you can see that the attributes of the rocket, such as the coordinates, the xy coordinates, have been declared here. And this is one method. You can have hundreds, several hundred methods, such as the move up method. And it's all together in one class called rocket. As you do projects, you might be lo looking at creating a class diagram, which become very useful. And we look at the different aspects of what this inheritance attributes, etc. might mean. There are four pillars of object-oriented programming, They're all very big words, as you can see, but as we go through this series, they will become very obvious and you'll never forget them. This is the constructor. It's not strictly in Python a constructor. You can th think of it as a initialization method. This is very key to classes. And we also have the self parameter, which is extremely important. So, without wasting any more time, let's get started 
and make our very first class. And we're going to make a shape class. And when you think about a shape, what are the attributes that a shape have has? And what are the methods that a shape might have? And we're going to have to abstract to some degree in terms of think of what we need from this shape class. So we start every class definition with the init method. So you have a double underscore, double underscore, and the self parameter. Now the self is how we refer to things in the class from within itself. It is always the first parameter in any function, and as you'll see in a minute, we use the self to access functions and variables inside the class. So suppose a shape, every shape has an x and a y, x being the width and y being the height. We'd use the self, we're declaring the attributes now, like so. so this is the width, and this is the height. You can also have various other descriptions, whatever it is. You could have something like the author. etc. Now let's get started with making a method. So exactly the same way that you might make a function, we're going to have a find area method, which is assuming that would be quite useful for a shape. So we have the self parameter, and this time we're going to call in the attributes that we've just created here. So return self x times self y, and assuming that mathematical formula is correct, that should give you the area of a shape. We can also have something like the parameter. Use the self again. Um, something like 2 times self.y, and that would give us the perimeter. Now, it would be useful to print the dimension. So let's have a little function or method which does this, and it says the dimensions of this shape are width, that would be self.x, and height, self.y, and we're done. Now, it's interesting to note that if we run this program now, now nothing happens. And why does nothing happen? Because this class doesn't actually create a shape. It is the blueprint of a shape. So it doesn't, we haven't actually created a shape. The shape has not come into existence yet. In order to do that, we're going to have to create what's called an object or an instance of the class. So I'm going to start by making a square. I'm going to call in the shape class that we've just made, like so. Now you can see what the shape class is asking for two parameters which it needs to be initialized, x and y. In fact, if I don't use x and y, it will throw up an error. So I'm going to start by making a square using the x and y parameters of 100 and 100. I can now call on one of the methods using my object and dot print dimension. I'm calling on this particular method. And let's see what happens. My square's been created and it's telling me it's calling this method. It's working correctly 100 by 100. You can do other things, you can do all kinds of things. Now in the prepared example for you, that you can play around with, we have added turtle into the attributes, and this allows you to actually visually see what you've created. So if I create something slightly different, like a, uh, it's calling it a square but it's not, our code actually draws it for you, and you can see that this is drawing something for you with 50 and 100 and we have other things which have been declared. Play around with this and then attempt the task at the end. This concept, let me just get this up here at the bottom, this creation of an object is actually called instantiation. If you re watch, read through some of the notes again, you'll come across this word quite often. So instantiation, big word for simply creating an instance of a class. And every object that you meet in your universe that you're going to be creating is an instance of a class. It's a using the class 
as a blueprint, you're creating objects using that blueprint, and every object obviously inherits all the attributes and the methods that you've defined in the class.